modern day self-driving cars are incredibly capable. This is another transformative technology. I was incredibly fortunate to go to California recently and I got to ride in the Google Waymo autonomous car. But somehow, because he's an awesome spy, he manages to get his hands on a mobile phone and he calls his daughter, who's back at the hotel in the middle of the city. And he calls her and he says, grab that grenade out of the suitcase, because he's got a grenade with him in his suitcase, and throw it out of your hotel window and onto the adjacent car park. Those consequences are not always as negative as you might think, and in many way, times, they're actually more positive than you could imagine. So don't be afraid of making those hard choices, don't be afraid of going against the grain, and remember, you've got plenty of time. You're young, you've got your whole lives ahead of you. I've been in three or four fully automated vehicles already, and the remarkable thing is you get bored after about five <laughs> minutes. That's a testament to the technology. The other thing everyone notices is that when the bus leaves the first part of the highway, it magically pitches upwards as if there's an invisible ramp there. Now if we allow for the ramp and do the calculations, it's actually vaguely plausible that that bus would be able to make it across the gap. AI navigation isn't such a problem on a nice sunny day, but poor conditions like rain, dust, snow or even darkness at night can make an AI's life much more complicated. It's time to geek out. I definitely don't think my robot vacuum cleaner should have any rights, but if I get a robot in my home that can care for me, cook for me and has emotions, I think we should definitely consider whether it should have some rights.